You're listening to theoutdoorstation.co.uk. Hello and welcome to another Podzine dated the 17th of December 2007. Everybody and welcome once again to the Outdoors Station and the Podzine, the audio magazine show for outdoors lovers everywhere. Well, I hope the week's been a good week for you, um, and uh, you're now starting to get uh, sorted for the Christmas season. As Christmas is only a, well, just over a week away uh, from uh, talking to people, it would appear that most guys are now starting to think about making a list uh, for what they need to do: go and uh, get shopping. And most of the women have already finished their list, and all they're worried about is who's doing the cooking and who's doing the driving. That seems like a usual sort of balance of the sexes again. Um, I just want to say thanks to everybody that's uh, sent us uh, seasonal greetings. Uh, and uh, do appreciate that, and I wish you all the listeners obviously the best of uh, best of luck for the uh, for the season. Um, and uh, if you want to drop us a line on the email, please do so at info at theoutdoorsstation.co.uk. That's info at theoutdoorsstation.co.uk, and uh, we would love to hear from you, particularly if you've got any news or organising any events or whatever for the new year that you'd like a little bit of publicity for. Glad to help. Uh, so what have we got on today's show? Well, we've got a quite uh, quite a bit, really. We've, uh, following an online theme, I think, uh, on today's show, um, I recently did an interview with Judy Armstrong. Uh, not the Judy Armstrong from TGO, but a different Judy Armstrong. One that I spoke to, well, almost a year ago now, just before she set out to do a 4,000-mile hike around the Via Alpina, uh, a lightweight hike. And so uh, I'm going to drop in an excerpt from, uh, from that interview, the full interview interview uh, is going to be available on the Outdoor Station shortly, uh, and it's, uh, it's a fascinating listen. She's um, one very determined, tough lady. And I'll also give you the um, website address as well, because her website is absolutely fantastic. Not only has she detailed her entire trip, uh, all the gear and all the rest of it, but there's photographs and information on there. It's just, it's endless. It really is uh, a work of love. And she did it all for charity, so uh, obviously all for a good cause too. Uh, then, would you believe we're going to meet some bloggers? Yes, some online outdoors bloggers. Um, uh, our roving reporter, Andy Howell, has been to meet a couple of bloggers and asked them why they do it. What, what is it all about? Why do people blog about their hobbies and pastimes and so on? Uh, and so uh, that might prove uh, a little interesting interesting as well. Keeping with the uh, online theme, uh, we're also going to have a look at the odds goings on at uh, Trail and Country Walking. Uh, they've now launched a new website um, which has um, created a bit of furore really online. A lot of people have been uh, uh, reacting to it. So we'll have a quick look at that and have a quick uh, explanation of the of the website and see what's going on, see if we can work out uh, what, what their intentions are. And uh, to to cap that off, we're also going to have a quick flip through the uh, January and uh, issues of Trail and TGO magazine as well and uh, have a quick flip through there and see what inspiration there is and Christmas reading for us all there. Uh, then, of course, we're going to announce the winner of the Lightwave Rucksack. The £75 uh, Lightwave S42 Rucksack is up for grabs, and we've uh, had all the entries. All the entries are now in the pot, and the computer will uh, digitally, randomly pull one out, uh, and we'll see who's the lucky winner, uh, winner of a new rucksack for Christmas. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have a uh, another competition as well, and we'll tell you more about that, uh, obviously, at the time. Now, let's get on to Judy. Um, just to give people a recap of, uh, of who she is and what she's doing, in case you didn't hear in the previous interviews, um, Judy was doing... She sold a house, basically, and she sold a car, and she sold all her worldly possessions to finance this trip, and she's um, just done a 10-month trip uh, around the French Southern Alps on the Via Alpina. Uh, in total, she's walked for, uh, what, 200 days... Um, no, she's actually walked for 275 days, uh, covered 4,000 mountain miles, including 450 miles of snowshoeing, climbed over a million feet, um, and um, she's gone lightweight carrying a pack that uh, varied between 5 and 7K in the process. So this is a little excerpt from the full interview, 
Uh, and this is where she started to tell me about some of her uh, more interesting um, adventures that happened during the trip, starting with something in some deep snow. <laughs> yes, this was a, a fairly rude introduction to uh, snow camping. I've not really done any serious stuff before. Um, I set off with, with um, everything I needed essentially for summer camping, which I was pretty confident in, down to about minus six, minus eight, wearing all my clothes. Um, a sleeping quilt that weighed about 600 grams, just over a pound. So quite lightweight, but I, I used it to minus five. The snow came in deeply, and uh, I think it must have been a cold front, because I got up to 2,500 meters, one of the refuges, and it was easily minus 10. Um, I cut away the snow from the door. Just, just describe and, how deep the snow was for, for people, if you would. Um, on that side of the refuge, it had worked its way up to roof level. So it was, I suppose, nine, ten feet deep, hard to say. But uh, I shoveled and cut all the snow away. It took me an hour, hour and a half. I need to find that uh, the door to the winter quarters was set into a steel frame and it had ice closed. And uh, I used my ice axe and couldn't shift it. So um, it was dark then and snowing and cold. And I didn't feel as though I could sensibly, you know, it's difficult um, traveling on snow after dark with a head torch. You really don't get much definition. So I thought I'd just stay put and uh, camp, which I really did. Um, sleeping, though, didn't really happen. <laughs> It was minus 16 at night, and uh, I got frostbite in two, three of my toes. Wow. Destroyed the nails there. So, 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 did what did you sort of um, bunk down by the doorway to the to the shelter, or did you move away from there? Um, I put up my tent and uh, the full sleeping system just in the lee of the, the shelter, but it's just plain cold. There wasn't mm. any any getting away from it, and sat there shivering all night. <laughs> Bit so, silly. Now I think I'd probably go down to the valley. Yeah, well, I was going to say, so the following day, what did you do? Head down to the valley or...? or yes, continue? yes, but I wasn't confident at that point of being able to detect avalanche slips after dark on a head torch. Now I think I probably could. Right, OK. So this awareness has slowly grown on, on, on over the over the uh, period of time then? It's changed hugely. And in fact, my whole navigation has changed hugely. I tend to look much more at the mountains and just, you know where the paths are. It's not too hard to work it out. Mm. Mm. Um, well, I remember. I remember one of the impressions uh, again you left me with when uh, when we last spoke uh, on and off the record, as it were, was was the how much you were um, researching other people's adventures and trips and so on all over the yeah. world, whether it be on the internet or podcasts or whatever it might be, to to glean any last minute piece of information. Um, and, and what's definitely coming across now is is there's this air of confidence that that you really do feel like you now fit in that environment and you can handle a lot more than you were perhaps nervous about before you started. Exactly. Um, in early November, uh, we had warning of a big storm coming through with 90 mile an hour winds at altitude. And uh, I thought, oh, well, that would be fun. Um, let's go and climb Mont Giboni. So I went off and did that, which was interesting. An interesting experience. <laughs> Didn't put me off, and uh, it was fine. And and now, let's, let's, I mean, let's talk about a few of your adventures. That was the chilly one. Have you had a, a few uh, really nice uh, days and, and glorious springtime weather and fantastic sunshine and and diving into sp mountain streams? Well, the spring was uh, superb in the Otsalpe, which is the it's the area I suppose about halfway between Nice and Lake Geneva. You have a funny mixing between the lovely light of Provence and, of course, the mountains as well. So often the light is absolutely magnificent. If you want to go and do some photography, that's the place. I just, there were times when I just stopped and tears literally came to my eyes. Just the beauty of the landscape. Just so remarkable. Well, I must, uh, we must also remind people where your, um, your website is so they can actually have a look at that while they're, while they're listening to this. So could you just give us the details? Because I know you've got lots of photographs on there. Yeah, I have them. <laughs> it's www.alpinechallenge, that's all one word, dot info. And there's photographs and gear reports and lots of information about um, walking in the Alps and uh, reviews, a whole series of gear reviews that I put on at the end of this walk, exactly how everything worked out in 4,000 miles. And uh, what was it like when you met other people? Because presumably as, as the year progressed and, and obviously spring, summer came round, you were, you were meeting more people on the hills. Were they surprised to see a lone woman and also somebody carrying such a, a lightweight sort of outfit? 
Yes, exactly. Um, at one point, I walked the the GR54, which is the Tour des Écrins. Um, it's a magnificent walk. If anybody has a couple of weeks spare, I really recommend it. It's it's beautiful, and I think it's within the capability of any competent hill walker. I met a group of school children doing it in their teens, for example. But uh, staying sometimes in the jeeps, people would say, "Ah, oh, you're you're day walking." looking at my backpack, and I said, no, no, I'm walking the Tour des Écrans. And they'd sort of look at me and look at their pack, which was two or three times the size. And I'd say, well, I've got everything I need there. And they'd say, oh, but you haven't got a tent, have you? I'd say, yes. Sleeping bag? Yes. At this point, there'd be a little crowd around me, and I said, shall I show you things? <laughs> so I'd sort of pull things out and say, well, there's my sleeping bag, and they'd sort of look at it in disgust and say, but it's so light. And then I'd pull out my tent, and they'd say, well, that's not a tent, it's a busy bag. <laughs> and it would sort of go on and on. And they, eventually people would just start scratching their heads and saying, c'est pas vrai, mais qu'est-ce que c'est? And the likes. And uh, you get to the bottom of a 30-litre backpack and they sort of look at the backpack and look at everything that come out of it. Rather like a TARDIS, bigger inside than out. Mm. And uh, all I really wanted, I think, was a white rabbit to sort of pull out like a magician saying, and there we are. <laughs> and, a, and a set of trumpets. Ta-da! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> The Try to think. I've had a cracked rib and a couple of bruised ribs. I bang my head three or four times. I've got a blood clot on my right eye that's clearing slowly from a head eye injury. Um, I had a bad fall and broke off three bits of bone in my right shoulder, which is a bit stupid of me. I mean, this is um, not during the walk you had these accidents. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, is it? during the walk, yeah. Um, well, how did, how did that happen? Tell tell us more. Well, I, I thought it would be fun to do some pole vaulting, Bob. Uh, you know, walking, it's, it's you just put one foot in front of the other, and I just thought it'd be fun to do something different. I was really stupid. I'd gone up a, a steep, difficult, snowy mountain, and I got to the bottom, and I was thinking, ha, ah, did that, didn't we? Whew. Pride comes before fall. I put my uh, pole in front of my right foot and fell over it, not very elegantly, and landed on rocks. And uh, big mess, cut out my left leg, blood everywhere. And um, I thought initially I'd broken my collarbone because of the pain. So I sat down, collected myself, um, let the shock wear off, ate some food, fixed the leg that was bleeding, and got back to the car. And <laughs> because I'm a nice soul, I thought, all right, we'd better go down to the valley here. And there was some lad, this was after dark, uh, hitchhiking at the bus stop. I thought, oh, let's pick him up, poor lad. He's not going to get down. So he sat in the car with me. And uh, my driving was not great that day. Couldn't really turn corners and change gear. And he looked at me and he said, your leg is bleeding. And I said, yes, I've fallen over. And then he said, your right arm is not working. <laughs> and... Uh, you and I could see the humour at the time. And I let him out and he sort of ran like a rabbit, obviously thinking, English, never, ever hitchhike with them. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Made me laugh at any rate. Yeah, yeah. The, the, so with, with this, some of these injuries then, did you actually call in or, or use the emergency services in some way? Yes, I had, I had two injuries. And because I was a little concerned about possible things that might happen afterwards, I called in uh, just to register the fact that an accident had happened. I took out an insurance policy with Snowcard, who was very good. Um, they gave me a very competitive quote. I was completely level with them and said that it was solo, that it was going to be for 10 months, it was going to be snowshoeing, 500 miles and on snow, and I always think full disclosure is best with insurance brokers. I phoned them up and they took down all the details. I said, look, at the moment nothing's happened, but I might get rabies, so at least you know who I am. The first accident was when a dog um, flew out of a small cage next to the path. A big um, Pyrenean sheepdog bit me in the leg, knocked me over, and was coming back for more until I stabbed it in the chest with my walking pole. Uh, we then parted, not the best of friends, um, with my leg bleeding. I did the right thing, I think, which was to squeeze the wounds, uh, but it was still quite some time till I got back down to um, the valley. I went to the accident emergency um, room at the local hospital, and they treated me. They, I think it would be handy if you spoke some French if you're planning to do this in France. 
Um, and most of it was covered with my EHIC card. That's the thing that gives you reciprocal health care in most European countries. In France, as far as I can judge, two-thirds of your immediate costs are covered. It seems to be possible to get the balance um, reimbursed as well. But we're only talking 60, 80 euros, and I couldn't really be bothered to claim a snow card. The other accident was a bit more serious. I fell over and um, cut my leg open, blood everywhere, and chipped three bits of bone off my shoulder. And again, I went down to the hospital. They provided an X-ray there and then and ultrasound the following day on my shoulder to locate all the bits of bone. Um, very clean, very helpful, very friendly. Uh, most impressed with French hospitals based on what I've seen. And I settled up um, using my debit card, again on presentation of this EHIC card, which I think is European Health Identity Card. And uh, that was Judy Armstrong, a couple of excerpts from the longer full interview, which is some 50 minutes long, which will be available on the Outdoor Station shortly. Uh, but I'd thoroughly recommend you visit her website, which is alpinechallenge.info. Uh, and um, I can't imagine there'd be a single outdoor enthusiast that doesn't get something from her website. It's fascinating, absolutely brilliant. Uh, fantastic diary, loads of pictures, gear reviews, um, all sorts of hints and tips, and, and a very, very honest um, reflection on the trip. So um, a, a thunderingly good read, and do have a listen to the rest of her interview, which will be available, as I say, on the Outdoor Station shortly. Right, let's have a quick look at the magazines now. Um, we've got the January issue of TGO and Trail. Uh, I'll look at uh, TGO first. Uh, TGO comes in at uh, 98 pages. Um, probably, I don't know, it sort of feels, got a bit of a thin, thin feeling to it really this year, uh, this year, this month. Um, there's the, as you would expect, the uh, Christmas goodies. Uh, various members of staff have listed off uh, some of their goodies that they're, um, would like to have in their, uh, in their sack from Santa, as it were, in their stockings, uh, which always makes a good reading. Uh, there's a very interesting article from a guy, um, called, uh, Tony Arthur, um, who, has moved from Derbyshire to Siberia to give uh, young children uh, a taste of adventure uh, because he's fed up to the back teeth with health and safety in this uh, in this country and some of the limitations, which makes for a good read. Uh, the outdoor photographers might be interested also in, uh, I think Chris Townsend's done a uh, review or comment on a lot of uh, compact cameras and some of the features available, uh, which is always useful because we always like to capture the uh, the outdoors if we can. Uh, and there's uh, certainly various, uh, various routes um, that are mentioned. There's a great uh, series of waterfall routes around the Lake District and their routes guide sadly once again there's nothing be below Yorkshire uh, but there's uh, several routes there that uh, many people would like to enjoy go playing in the snow um, uh, usual from Colin Pryor the photographer Colin Pryor um, again a nice article on search and rescue uh, give you a few more thoughts on that and various uh, extra editorial snippets as it were from various things uh, which is quite good. One I notice is um, the fact that they had a record entry for the TGO Challenge this year. Uh, well, it hardly surprises me, really, after all the podcasts and the uh, bloggers' comments and diaries that have been floating around that uh, that has gained a lot of interest. Um, but, yeah, a gentle read. I'd call it a gentle read. Um, there is a good review, actually, thinking about it, on Meth's Burners. Uh, Chris Townsend, once again, goes to great detail uh, in um, looking at some of the very, very lightweight Meth's Burners and seeing how efficient they are um, and uh, that's pretty well it apart from sort of one or two uh, extra snippets in their Jim Perrin and so on the uh, trail magazine uh, is a much juicier comes in I think it's 100 and 130 pages the trail magazine so it's obviously a bit more of a sizable tome um, we've got let's just start from the beginning um, they are uh, producing or promoting a, a 100 challenge uh, was supported by Alan Hinks in aid of uh, Water Aid uh, Trail 100 Challenge, uh, which is something worth getting involved in. Uh, as would predicted, as the same with TGO, there's the uh, Christmas gift uh, page, a couple of pages of uh, goodies that uh, to remind people of various things to add to their, their uh, rucksack for this time of year. 
Um, I notice um, Graham Thompson has done a review of the Lifesaver system, the Lifesaver 400, 4000 system, which is the water purifying system that uh, I reviewed. Uh, I did an interview with uh, the managing uh, sales director uh, about four or five weeks ago, uh, and uh, he's come out with a fairly positive comment on that, uh, although as he concluded, like I did, it's a bit on the large size for sort of day-to-day -day rucksack use, but ideal if you're going further afield and uh, the water can be questionable. Uh, Trail is certainly uh, pushing their uh, real ale. Uh, and there's a series of walking routes that involve calling into the pub and picking up the trail ale. Uh, I don't know if you realise, but um, Trail have actually sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, is it sponsored or produced or named? I think they've named uh, a beer or had a beer named after them anyway. There's uh, uh, something in to do with uh, outdoors walking and beer. It's always a good thing, isn't it? Um, duvet jacket review, uh, a couple of... Um, uh, winter walks and uh, reminding people of the uh, importance of uh, getting the safety correct for um, snow walking. So you know, you know about your ice axe arrest and uh, and so on. So uh, a couple of good articles on that, which makes for a good read. Um, then we've got their uh, their section, which I've they got a name for this section. This bit in the middle, I do like that. The knowledge, that's right. The knowledge, which is full of snippets of information and odd things, recipes, one-liners, uh, and so on. But I actually find, find it uh, probably one of the most interesting parts of the magazine. It's always full of useful bits and bobs that um, make for, for, useful, uh, for useful reading. Um, then a bit more uh, upon Striding Edge, a review of uh, headlamps. And um, what's that on there? Uh, and uh, flasks, would you believe? Insulated flasks to take on 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 the hills, um, but there's there's plenty more in here. Um, there's certainly walks around the the Rhinogs, I think you pronounce it. Um, there's their trail routes, uh, and they've got trail routes going right down to Dartmoor. Congratulations! Uh, plus, including one of my favourite places around the the Brecon Beacons. Um, so uh, you know, it possibly more um, it encapsulates more of the UK's surroundings than perhaps TGO does. I have to say. So congratulations on on that front. However, it, it does seem odd that the uh, the Christmas edition, the January edition of the magazine, has no mention of the change of websites. Um, now, for people who are sort of casual listeners or casual users of the internet as a source of information um, will probably know that uh, the trail. Um, forums and sort of website information has been encapsulated within the country walking one. So the original uh, website was countrywalking.co.uk. Uh, well, ha they have now, I don't know what the word is, possibly combined, but they seem to have amalgamated in some way, and they've started a new website to share, um, which comes under the name of liveforthetoutdoors.com. And this has taken a lot of people by surprise, judging on the reaction from uh, within the forum, within their forum, and also within the Outdoors Magic Forum. Some people love it, and some people don't love it so much. Um, it's an acquired taste, I have to say. When you hit it, first of all, it has no um, similarities to the previous layout. Uh, and certainly, if you're looking for something, uh, as I did the first time I used it, I gave up in frustration going round around in circles trying to work out where they'd put everything. Um, the design of it is quite funky. Uh, it's just very much within the sort of within the the trail um, uh, style, really. I wouldn't have thought so much the country walking, but you know uh, that's um, down to whoever commissioned it. Uh, and the designer has certainly um, taken the the theme and followed it all the way through. Uh, there's lots of sort of. Uh, do you remember the Monty Python? Um, cartoon sections where they used to have uh, animated heads that mouths that moved and so on well there's lots of sort of quirky characters like that dotted around the place and they've mixed um, hand-drawn graphics with uh, with uh, photographs and so on and um, uh, mixed up the font somewhat uh, it does make it for for hard reading on a 15 inch screen I must admit like I've got at the moment when I'm looking at the actual site now um, but th within there the information is definitely still there so um, there's a little bit of a hunt uh, involved. And I think they've probably answered it, um, sorry, they've probably launched it uh, slightly earlier than they should have done because it's not quite um, f running fluidly, shall we say. But uh, anyway, we go to the home page, and uh, we're looking at that at the moment, uh, and nowhere on the home page does it say the word forum. Uh, which is a bit confusing, because if you've just come from one forum and you want to now go to the next one, uh, there's no mention of it. Um, so you have to go to community, and then from community, uh, you then find the forums. 
Uh, and uh, again, on the 15-inch screen, you scroll down the screen a little bit and you see the sort of the, the, the top five topics or the top five latest posts. Um, but you don't realise that actually down the bottom of the screen is where the old forum is, is buried and hidden. Oh, and I notice we've got uh, Meet the Moderators now down the left-hand side. Let's have a quick look. Meet them all. Let's have a see who's, uh, who's moderating. Um... Okay, <laughs> we could not find any matches. Okay, so obviously that's not working just yet. Um, so let's have a look then and, and see how uh, the search application works. Um, I've put a lot of mentions on here about the podcasts and uh, the shows. So let's just type in podcast, search all forums, and we should have a listing of all the 40 or 50 comments um you looked for podcast in all forums and there were no results matching your search oh dear let's try something simple like trail and uh search that and oh yeah so it obviously is working but not working for the word podcast hmm Okay, must be something going on there. There's eight results mentioning the title trail. So I think it's uh, work in hand, and um, there's been a lot of comments, uh, positive and negative, uh, and it w would appear that the team behind it are beavering away trying to get it all running properly. But it does does seem to be um, lacking the full functionality at the moment, and I think that's probably let them down a bit, uh, as well as sort of a bit of confusion over actually why. Why this design, um, why they've gone this way, and why they've... You know, move so far away from the uh, the established sort of trail um, presentation and country walking presentation because it, it, the whole design and the whole name of it doesn't sit happily with either. Uh, but I'm sure the powers that be know exactly the reason they've done it for, and um, we will know in the fullness of time um, what direction they're taking it all in. You never know; maybe they're going to merge the magazines. Anyway. Talking about online information, let's now move on to Andy Hell. Andy Hell has been out to meet the bloggers. The bloggers, of course, online outdoors bloggers. Um, there's now hmm, probably 50 or 60, possibly even more than that, around the world who are very active, um, providing a, an insight into their outdoor activities, possibly in some cases an insight to their lives, uh, but also an insight into their passion. And Andy went to meet a couple of them and asked them why. Why do they do it? The internet has become an important resource for walkers, backpackers and trekkers everywhere. Podcasts like this one keep us up to date with the latest news and developments from the outdoors world and they help to fuel that passion for the hills, even though we may be stuck in the heart of a city or located a long way away from our favourite mountain range. But the internet outdoor community also benefits greatly from an expanding group of outdoor bloggers, people who entertain us on an almost daily basis with their thoughts and experiences of the great outdoors. But what makes the bloggers tick? Why do they do what they do? And what do they get out of communicating their love of the outdoors with such an anonymous audience? Well, over the last year or so, I've been talking to some of the most prominent bloggers in the UK and Europe. And over the next few pod scenes, I hope to be sharing some of those conversations with you. I start with two conversations recorded during the outdoors show at the NEC in Birmingham earlier this year. And first off, I spoke to outdoor blogger George Cummings, a.k.a. London Backpacker. So, George, what do you think of these outdoor blogs? Um, they're really interesting. It's, um, it's interesting to read other people's thoughts on walking, gear, um, different routes that you can actually use, um, go out and try. And it also gives every well, it gives me a sense of community with backpackers and walkers. Now, this word community is used a lot in the people, with I've been talking to people about this project. And um, is that a bit crass? Or, uh, what does that really mean, a sense of community? Well, for me, it just means that I, it, uh, it means that I've got people to talk to and share comments with. I mean, people I work with are not really interested in walking. They, they, they think I'm mad to go out, you know, camp in February in the snow and stuff like that and cooking meals on a little, you know, uh, stove and stuff. So it, it gives me an opportunity to talk to people all about the things that I enjoy. And this is almost getting to the point of being a real source of entertainment in a funny way, isn't it? I mean, you can sit and quite easily spend a good hour lost in your own hobby by reading through other people's experiences and thoughts. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I, I mean, the, the one thing that I, I, I see it as... Um, it's, it's a bit like an evening paper because I haven't got 
computer access at work, so I tend to only read it in the evenings. So I, I'll get home and there might be 15, 20 posts from other bloggers. So I can spend an hour, an hour and a half sitting there reading it. And it, like I say, it's like an evening paper. You, you could, But it's an evening paper with everything that I enjoy. So I, there's no rubbish in there and also there's no adverts. Now, what on earth possessed you to start your own blog? Well, originally I had a website which I posted photographs to and um, I put trip reports on there but it, it, doing the actual um, coding for it all the time and that w- was a bit of a pain it, it, it took too much time so I happened to see um, blogger.com and I thought well that's an easier way of doing po- just posting stuff and really it started out that it was just stuff for me and my mate that actually go walking it was a way that he could share the photographs that I'd taken and I just put like little comments on there and it's kind of, it's developed from that really so you've been doing it for a while now so why do you do it why do you keep doing it um I keep I don't know why I keep up because because I, I feel as though sometimes I've got things to say um yeah, you know, sometimes I'll read an article in a, mag- you know, a hiking magazine, and um, I don't know. You know, no one ever agrees with what what will be written. So it's a way of me getting my view across. Because if you wrote into the letters page, there's a good chance that it won't get in because you know there's probably thousands of people actually writing into the letters page. And also, by the time it probably gets in, could be two or three months down the line from when the article was written, and people will look at it and think. What's he talking about? So it's a, it's an intensely personal thing, but it's not a private diary. You're conscious that there's a there's a potentially readership as a public out there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you are you are you do realise that there are people reading it because the numbers of people that visit the site. You know, they're not just going there for they're not just popping in because it, you know people will be there and they'll be on for 10 15 minutes. So they must be reading something. So yeah, yeah, you know. So you do tend to write. Open, yeah, openly to a certain degree anyway. Now, over the last few months, we've seen quite a lot of new developments, I guess. People taking out um, PDAs with them onto the trail and, and making real-time posts. Um, other people playing around with video clips. How do you see this developing? I think it's, I think there's more and more people are going to actually do it. Um, uh, uh, the actual real-time blogging is a great idea. It's great to come home in the evening. I mean, at present, we've got um, Alan Sloman doing his Land's End to John O'Groats. Eating his way across the country. Eating eating and drinking his way across the country. But it's really interesting to come home and see that he's posted maybe three or four posts in the evening, and it's nice to know how he's getting on, what he's doing. So that side of it's really interesting. Yeah. And um, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of blogger fatigue out there. I mean, walking bloggers tend to be uh, long-lived, don't they? They're not giving up easily. It doesn't seem to be. I think, I mean, personally for me, the reason is I, I can't, I live in London, so my nearest place is in the North Downs, which is not particularly great. South Downs is maybe two hours away, and I, I can't get out every weekend. So it, it gives me another way of experience in the outdoors without actually being outdoors. I should, of course, point out that that interview was recorded while long-distance hiker Alan Sloman was still engaged in his mammoth walk from Land's End to John O'Groats. You can find out more about George's blog by googling London Backpacker and you'll soon be on George's site, where you can find links to some of his other little whimsical YouTube films as well. At the Outdoor Show, I was also lucky to talk to one of the most prolific bloggers in the UK, John Hee. John, what is it about the blogs that captures your imagination? It's the ability to be able to communicate with people in the, in the outdoor community in particular, um, to be timely and just to be able to express myself, really. So um, communication, it's, uh, there's an interactive element to that. It's, uh, as, it's as much about you getting entertainment for something, but also about you putting something back into it. Definitely about putting something back, although the interaction doesn't necessarily have to be there. There's a number of people who run blogs without specifically uh, getting any feedback. And most of us bloggers know you only get a very small percentage of people who can be, uh, they'll leave comments or contact you. 
But yeah, it, it is it is a community aspect. You are trying to put something back into um, a lot of the outdoors and a lot of the things you actually do and trying to express it. Now, everybody I've talked to has mentioned this notion about a sense of community. Even those people that don't blog, they just read them. I mean, is this a bit kind of syrupy? I mean, uh, what do you mean by community? Uh, interesting catch question. Um, over the years, I've been involved in... Uh, motorcycling the biker community i've been involved in fishing and that community and the outdoor community as well there's, there's a certain fellowship as a woman goes past on skates there's a certain fellowship um, which uh, in the outdoor community is very very positively spirited um, there's a lot of people out there doing things for themselves They've got a certain individual individuality which you will find, for instance, in the biker community as well. But the the general nastiness, the uh, rubbing up against each other, the point scoring, the inter rivalry is so very good natured within the outdoor community. Um, uh, the bloggers, as such, we, we will um, take it out of each other at a fair fair old rate but at the same time we all recognise we're getting a joint enjoyment out of what we're doing and out of trying to express the way in which uh, we can like, be posh interact with the outdoors despite um, being a, a, a complete difference in um, experience levels age background the whole thing it all flattens out now you mentioned their um, enjoyment I mean it strikes me now we've almost got to the point where this is entertaining in the sense that you can sit down in the morning for an hour over a cup of coffee or in the evening when you get home from work and quite happily lose yourself in the outdoors world and the outdoor blogs, you know, both the enthusiasts and the professional world. Um, do, you think we're going, do you think that's going to become more pronounced over the next few years? I hope not, to be honest. Nothing will ever replace what we actually do outdoors. Personally, I, li I live in the deep south. Uh, my ability to get in the hills requires a minimum of a three-hour car journey, so I'm not just going to pop over there and do it for the day. It's, it's a long weekend, or if I go to the lakes, uh, it's, it's major expenditure for me, uh, and I'll be going away for a week, week maximum. So most of my walking is flatland, new forest, that type of thing. Um, the blogs are a way for me to communicate with people, and I think, Andy, you may have said this in the past, communicate with people who can't necessarily do it themselves at that particular time so we're trying to we're keeping our own interests alive we, we may be shopping for a rucksack we may not be buying it in three or four months time or until three or four months time we're looking for it now so that, that sort of thing it's, it's our ability to I suppose keep the spirit alive fan the flame while we've got the chance now what possessed you to start blogging yourself Ah, that's a really good one. If I were to do the answer to that, <laughs> there's nothing quite so bad. I enjoy writing. I've, I've always thought about doing it um, professionally, if you like, but I never make any money out of it. I do a fair bit of writing in my job within my uh, career, but it is a very um, defined, technical and uh, closely censored format. So the nice thing about a blog is I can say what I like, when I like, and how I like, and the only person who's really going to get it wrong or get worried about it is me if I actually say the wrong thing in the wrong way. So, for instance, recently, one or two of you may have noticed I've gone off on a flight of fancy um, in my journey to actually get up here, some of which may or may not have been true. Now, I, I can't think of any other sphere where I could have actually have, have done that. Um, the blog's got to be entertaining, it's got to be informative, it, it's got to be sharing, and it's got to be something you want to come back to and you want to read. Yeah, and it, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not, it was quite good fun to, 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 to look at every day. You should have been in that ditch with me on that, that cold night. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've seen quite a lot of new innovations over the last couple of months, people taking um, PDAs with them on the hills and doing um, effectively real-time blogs. Do you, think there's, uh, do you think that's the way in which it's going to go? No, I hope not. I really do. Um, I mean, I've come up armed with this, uh, on this particular show, I've come up with a dictaphone, I've got a camera, I've got a mobile phone, oh, I've got my trusty little Scion stuck in the back of the car, and that's because later this weekend um, I'll be writing up a few articles away, away from the computer. But for me, the enjoyment about getting on the hills is getting away from all the technology I work with every day. 
I'll check a mobile phone with me for safety to keep in contact uh, in emergencies. I'll take uh, an MP3 player because I like listening to things from out there. That's my personal preference. But I wouldn't like to see the technology get any much further than that. So this is about keeping us connected to the hills where we can't be there, but it's certainly not about uh, an alternative or it's certainly nothing that should be detracting from the crime experience itself. Abs absolutely. We're not all lucky enough to live in the Lake District or the Peak District, somewhere like that. Some of us live in conurbation, so that, it'd be interesting to do uh, a quick straw poll of the bloggers to see how many of them don't live outside cities. Well, of course, many of us outdoor bloggers do live in the city, and as John and George suggested, blogging helps keep our passion alive. You can visit John's blog by googling Walkabout in the UK or John He, and you'll soon find yourself at his website, which is a cracking read, not least because John has created quite an idiosyncratic and individual little world out there on his outdoor blog. I'll be back again over the next few weeks where I'll be speaking to more of the UK and Europe's leading bloggers. Thanks very much, Andy. Yeah, very interesting uh, little insight into the mind of an outdoor blogger. More coming soon. Um, we normally have a diary section, but to be honest, there's uh, very little going on uh, over the next couple of weeks, naturally, apart from people relaxing in the pleasure of the company of their families. Um, but uh, Outdoors Magic is... Uh, there's a social meet being sort of organised over on Outdoors Magic for the Brecon Beacons, if you feel like having a little bit of a burst around Penavan to uh, get rid of some weight. And I'm not too sure whether it's the 27th or the 28th. Um, as I'm recording this, the date hasn't been finally decided. Um, but it's either the 27th or 28th. Keep an eye on outdoorsmagic.co.uk uh, under the title of Brecon Beacons in the social calendar section. Uh, and also uh, Robin Ashcroft is doing a couple of talks on the same date, 27th, 28th, um, at the National Mountaineering Exhibition in Reged. Um, visit the website, which is rheged.com, reged.com, or call 01768860090, and uh, they will fill you in with um, the timetable. Uh, so that pretty well then allows us now to move on to the competition. Now, last week we had a fabulous competition, uh, which was to win a Lightwave S42 rucksack, a brand new Lightwave S42 rucksack. Size 2 in blue, valued at uh, about £75. And thanks very much indeed to Lightwave for contributing that prize. Well, um, we didn't have as many entries as I was hoping, actually. We only had about sort of 50 or 60 entries. So the people that entered are um, going to be keeping their fingers crossed at this very moment in time. Uh, so we are now about to hit the button on the randomizer computer or whatever other technical word I want to call it, and uh, get it to spew out the answer randomly out of the electronic hat. So here it comes. And we have a winner. Yes, well, the question was, what is the frame of the Lightwave S-Series rucksack made from? And the correct answer is uh, 7001 T6 tubular aluminium. And the person who, that the computer has pulled out of the hat is Nick Brown. Nick Brown, um, I don't have any more details apart from you're from, uh, you work in, in Bristol. Yeah, I see the university there in Bristol. So, Nick, if you're listening, uh, get in contact, please, and do give me your mailing address so I can get that prize straight to you and make you a happy bunny for Christmas. Which brings us on to this week's competition. Now, how would you like a drink on us? No, 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 I take that back. How would you like 200 drinks on us? Mmm, I thought so. Well, this week's prize is for a box of 200 instant sachet drinks. Yes, Drink Master, who produce Drink Pack, have sent us a box full of drinks. And they're absolutely fantastic. You know how it is, you want a, a hot drink when you're on the hills and so on, and sometimes taking a, a, an insipid uh, flask of tea or whatever just doesn't quite cut it. Well, these drinks are really top quality, and I've been drinking them for the last week or so since the <laughs> sample box arrived. 
good. And I've just finished off my second cup of coffee. Let me just quickly list some of the things here. We've got Cafe Max, which is the one I particularly like, which is an espresso. Uh, we've got Manhattan Coffee, which is also very nice. Uh, we've got uh, a whole series of Nesse, uh, Nesse Cafe coffees, Alta Rica and uh, Gold Blend and Cappuccino and uh, Decaffeinated. We've got Fair Trade Coffee. We've got Coffee Lat- uh, Nesse Cafe Latte. We have, for the tea drinkers amongst us, Heritage Tea, PG Tips, Thai Foo, Lift, Lemon Tea and Fair Trade Tea. We also have Hot Chocolates, Cadbury's, uh, Luxury Chocolate, Aero Chocolate and Fair Trade Hot Chocolate. We have soups designed by Ainsley Harriet. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Ainsley Harriet. Uh, chicken soup, tomato soup, mushroom soup, vegetable soup and Bovril. And then, plus of course, you have cold drinks, blackberry and summer fresh orange. Well, you are about to win. We're about to win. You can win a box of 200 assorted drinks. Uh, and that sort of uh, checks out to be about sort of £40 pounds worth of drinks. So that'll keep you going for a year or so. And if you're anything like me, actually, there's a great range in there. If you just feel like a quick drink and you don't want to bother with all the faff of uh, sorting out tea bags and whatever, this is the way to go. So, how? what is the question and how can you win it? Right. Drinkmaster dot co dot uk that's drinkmaster dot co dot uk have a very interesting website where you can go and view the drinks and also buy direct should you wish to do so now um let's make this nice and easy on their website they have a live webcam uh presumably located where they're located in the uh, in the countryside somewhere and uh, what i'd like you to do is tell me the name of the webcam that's all it is just email me your details name and address if possible please with the answer to the question, what is the title of their webcam? They've given it a name, and uh, you will be put into the hat and could be the lucky winner of 200 free drinks the entirety of next year. Got to be good, isn't it? So, um, all you need to do, answer the question, give me your details, and email the answer to drinkpack, that's uh, D-R-I-N-K-P-A-C, no K, P-A-C, hyphen, competition, at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. So that's drinkpack hyphen competition at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. And the winner will be drawn out of the electronic hat this time the following week, which, of course, will be Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. I'm doing a show on Christmas Eve. It's very hard to uh, get my head around that, but I shall do my best to entertain and inform and um, give people some some information uh, for the holiday break. So, enjoy your Christmas shopping. I've run into 46 minutes again. I've got to try and speed this up. I hope you've enjoyed the show and a bit of variety, and we'll see you same time next week with some more news. Bye for now. This independent programme is produced and hosted by theoutdoorstation.co.uk.